today on Repairs 101, I'm going to show you how to choose the right engine oil for your vehicle. Alright, here we go. Today on Repairs 101, I thought I'd try and answer the question that I get asked more than any other question, and that is, what kind of oil should I put in my engine? Now, it's a really good question, and it's really worth looking into. So today, I thought I would try and teach you how to decide for yourself what kind of engine oil to put in your engine. Using the wrong motor oil can lead to poor performance, premature wear, and ultimately it could lead to failure. Here's the chart given in my Buick Century's owner's manual. And you can see very similar in the uh, owner's manual for my Blazer. So maybe the first question you've got to ask yourself is what am I burning? Am I burning gas or diesel? There's a big difference between oils designed for gasoline engines and oils designed for diesel engines. So the API, the American Petroleum Institute, is the system that's in use here in Canada and the U.S. And so the API classification started off as SA, then SB, SC, SD. You get the idea, right? So around the world, there are other systems in use. Okay, and you can see here, right in the opening pages of the book, of, of the service manual, you can see that they are telling you that uh, they want engine oils that are labeled by the API. Okay, so they call this the API gasoline engine starburst. Oils made specifically and exclusively for gasoline engines will have the starburst on them. Okay, now this little symbol here is called the API donut, and this donut gives you all the information you need about the oil. It says that it's API service SL. In the middle of the donut, it says that it's SAE 5W30 viscosity. And underneath, it tells you that it is an energy conserving oil. Here's a list of API service classifications for gasoline engines, and here's a list of API service classifications for diesel engines. And of course, the reason I'm flashing through this quickly is because for most people, it's really not that important. A real gearhead might want to study these charts and understand them. Now, most people just aren't going to need to know every service classification on the chart. Okay, we're going to go to the store, we're going to pick up what's on the shelf. It's going to be fairly current, if not the most current oil available, and it's going to match our, our fairly new to used vehicles. Whether you think the S is for spark or service, and whether you think the C is for compression or, or commercial, it doesn't matter as long as you learn that C is for diesel burning engines and S is for gasoline burning engines. If you have a brand new vehicle, I definitely recommend checking and seeing that the service classification called for by the engine manufacturer matches the service classification of the engine oil you intend to use. Okay, so viscosity. Now that's another issue. Viscosity is the measure of how thick an oil is. Think of um, molasses in February. Now that's going to be really thick, right? whereas water is thin. The lower the number on the viscosity scale, the thinner it is. It's, so it's very simple. So a five weight oil is going to be very thin compared to a 40 weight oil, say. So keep in mind that when you're considering viscosity for your vehicle, really what you're asking yourself is, is it going to be thin enough to start in the coldest conditions that it's going to be exposed to? So, for instance, you know, if you're in the Yukon uh, at Christmas time, you're going to need thin oil, you know, a five weight oil, even a zero weight oil. If you're in an equatorial uh, climate, then for sure you're not going to really need anything very thin. You could go with straight 40 weight oil or straight 30 weight oil probably and have uh, no problems ever starting it because it's not going to be thickening in the cold. So multi-grade oil is what they've come up with to address the problem of cold starts and then being thick enough to protect the engine when it's hot and running. When it's cold, it behaves differently from the way it behaves when it's hot. And the way they do that is to introduce a polymer into the oil in order to make it behave differently at different temperature ranges. For instance, at, when it's cold, it will be much thinner than when it's hot, which is counterintuitive, I understand. So what they're saying here is that it's a, if it's below zero degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to need a 5W30 oil, and if it's above zero degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to be okay with a 10W30 multi-grade oil. Okay, over on this page, we've got another uh, viscosity chart, 
and this time it's given in like a bar graph. So most everybody uses multi-grade oils in their vehicles these days with the exception of extreme service and collectors. You know, the real hardcore uh, gearheads, they're going to want to use single weight oils because they're changing their oil three and four times a year and uh, they want to make sure that no matter what the conditions are, they've got the absolute best performing oil in their crankcase. Most people are going to fall into the lower one or two of these categories and be wanting to use either uh, single weight oils from this this column here or multi-grade oils here and here okay compared to conventional oils synthetic oils last a lot longer they can withstand a lot more for heavy duty applications more extreme duty applications uh, more continuous service um, they're, they're better in turbocharged systems supercharged systems anywhere again where there's extreme service Okay, some examples of extreme duty would be continuous service, say an engine that's running 24 hours a day, a taxi cab or a police vehicle, could be say a forklift that's running commercial duty, race cars, uh, high performance vehicles, or how about say you know, a tugboat that's running 24 hours a day pulling a load through the inside passage, something like that, you know, um, that's extreme service. Now synthetic oils will last longer because, because they resist degradation through oxidization. In other words, they don't oxidize quite as rapidly as conventional oils. Okay, so after you decide what you're burning, gas or diesel, and which service classification oil you need, is it a C-class oil or an S-class oil, then the last thing you need to know is what viscosity do you want. And the only thing you need to ask yourself is how cold is it going to get when I start this thing. And like I said, you know, the lower the temperature, the lower the number of viscosity you want. And if it's real, real cold out there, you want something as low as, you know, 5W or even 0W to get her started.